During quarantine, I've been watching through a bunch of animated franchises with my kids, and after I watch them, I like to talk about them here on the channel. So today I'm gonna stop and rank all five Cars and Planes movies from the worst to the best. My name is Sean and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your ranking of the five Cars and Planes movies. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours. When it comes to this set of films, there is a little bit of confusion because the Planes movies are spin-offs of the Cars movies, but the Planes movies weren't made by Pixar, they're made by Disney Toon Studios, the direct-to-video division of Disney Studios, but the Planes movies were actually released in theaters and made a pretty good bit of money, therefore there's some confusion as to whether the Planes movies are Pixar films. They are not, but they are tied to the Cars films. That's the backstory on all of that. One more thing before we get started. I've been doing some reviews and rankings with my kids over on my second channel. So if you wanna see me interact with my kids and hear their kind of take on some animated franchises and other stuff, you can check that out right up here and let's get started. Coming in in last place is Cars 2. For me, without question, this is Pixar's biggest misfire where they just picked a really bad direction and went down that path full speed ahead. It feels like a direct-to-video sequel spin-off, but somehow it's not as good as the actual spin-off movies that they did. Now, granted, the production here, the animation, the visuals are just as good as ever, but it's the specific plot line that they picked that just kills this thing for me. At its core, they switched from like a race car movie about the big city guy getting stuck in the small city and kind of this exploration and celebration of America, Anna, and stuff like that, trades all of that out to be a spy thriller and it sidelines the lead character of the first film, takes the plucky sidekick of it, promotes him to the lead, and puts him in a spy comedy. And so there's this massive tonal shift. There's a huge kind of character dynamic thing to where we don't have a character that's really designed to be a lead. He's designed to be the funny sidekick and instead we put him on this big wacky adventure that both feels like the most kiddie Pixar film that abandons the big emotion that you normally have Pixar films, abandons all of that to go with kiddie humor, like he turns into Dracula and he says, I want to suck your gas. And then it also has torture sequences in it and cars die in the movie. So just so many things about it that are highly imbalanced. It feels like it would have worked better if it had been just a movie about Mater and essentially it would be a feature length version of one of these Mater's tales. They did a bunch of shorts about Mater telling tales. That's basically what this is except they try and put Lightning McQueen in it and with this racing subplot and the pieces just don't fit together. The tone doesn't really work and it doesn't feel up to the standards of Pixar or even a good movie in general and mixes odd things in a way that I don't enjoy. I like pickles, I like ice cream. I don't like them put together and that's what this feels like. Number four is Planes, the spinoff of the Cars franchise that was originally planned to be released direct to video, but eventually they decided to put it out in theaters. And John Lasseter, the brain behind the Cars franchise, did work on the story for this film and I think it's an enjoyable enough spinoff. There's not a lot inside of it that really makes it pop. It doesn't necessarily have a clever enough script to get enough laughs out of you, but as kind of this spinoff of the world of cars using planes, telling a story about planes racing around the world, it hits all the beats it's supposed to hit all along the way, and Dusty Crop Hopper I think is a bit more of a likable lead character than Lightning McQueen is because he has a bit more humility to him and you can root for the guy that's the underdog a little bit more than the arrogant guy that's already winning the races. Add to that, Dane Cook is surprisingly good in that role and doesn't kind of bring any kind of his crassness that you normally expect from Dane Cook. And so it makes for having a lead character that you're rooting for. Also has a soundtrack that's 
pretty memorable to me. I don't know, it's not like great, but for whatever reason, the rock soundtrack to this film has always gets stuck in my head. Maybe it's because my kids used to watch this movie all of the time a few years back. But just in general, I think that this would be a film that was a lot better remembered had they released it direct to video. By putting it out in theaters, I think they kind of created a comparison that didn't do them any favors, but I think it does have a bit to offer. Real quick, before I give you my top three, remember to share your ranking down below in the comments section. Remember, my list isn't the right list, it's just my list, and I would love to see yours. Also, I've done a ton of animated franchise rankings over the years, including the Pixar franchise as a whole. You can check those out right up here. If you've enjoyed this video, there's definitely something in there that you'll enjoy. In third place is Cars 3. After the incredibly disappointing Cars 2, this was a nice return to form, putting the focus back on Lightning McQueen, and even more so than the first film, leaning into the sports genre. It very much is borrowing from the plots of Rocky III as well as Talladega Nights, and so the basic plot itself isn't the most original, but that story template does fit this franchise and this character really well to give him another emotional arc that fits where the character would be at and showing progress for him throughout the films. But this is also a movie for me where I feel the idea is a lot better than the execution. Just in general, I don't feel like the script is as sharp and clever as it should be. But really what hurts this film for me is the third act that I think just strains so much credibility and it just takes me out of the film. There's a big twist that happens and the twist itself isn't stupid. It's not a bad idea. They have it happen actually in the middle of the race, which justifies any logic. It basically creates a scenario where all the victories in the third act come through cheats rather than earning it. And so then even as there's things about companies and stuff that in the resolution of the film, all of it feels like a big cheat to me and it ends the film on a really sour note. And I wish that they would thought a lot more about how this would play out and how actual races work and that you can't do what they do in this movie. And I, I know it's a movie about talking cars, but you have to have some rules in your, your universe. You have to understand how races work and what cheats is and you can't write cheating into your script just so you that you can have a happy ending so it's frustrating because there is a lot of good things about this movie and then it, it just screws it up so bad it gets a flat tire in the final lap our runner-up is planes fire and rescue i know a lot of people aren't crazy about the planes films but they work well enough for me and this film in particular hit all the right notes that I was expecting from this film. It's not trying to be the biggest and the greatest animated film of all time. It's just telling a simple story about Dusty Crop Hopper. And this one does once again have a genre shift, which I criticized with Cars 2, but here it's worked into the plot of the film of you have this racer that can't race anymore. And he's trying to figure out what can I do with my skills that I have? What is still left in me? Can I have some sort of redemption? Can I get back to racing? What can I do with my skills? And that takes him on this journey to a second career. And you know, if you know anything about kind of my story, I had a second chance in life, had a second career with this YouTube thing. And so even, it's a silly movie about talking planes, putting out fires, but there's a little bit of an emotional resonance to it that hit the notes that I wanted. I also just appreciate the way that it has Dusty go on this journey where he has his low moments, where he is frustrated and angry at the loss of what he had before, but he's not overtly written as a cynical character towards the situation. He is trying to do the right thing and discovering what really matters and they incorporate just enough side characters to kind of give him a full journey. So. I, I get that some of you aren't crazy about this movie. I watched it and had a good enough time with it and got what I wanted and nothing about it frustrated me like Cars 3 had many things that frustrated me. But coming in in first place is Cars, a story about a big city racer getting stuck in a slow moving small town that has some really nice 
themes about these small cities in America that are kind of getting overlooked and the consequences of kind of the commercialization. I know it's a silly movie about talking cars and races, but it, it touches on some interesting stuff about small towns and big cities and how culture actually works. And I think that's some of what was missing in the later Cars films, that you have all the wacky characters like Mater showing up and a big personality like Lightning McQueen and the fun of the races, but at its core, it was also about small towns and how they interact and how they're perceived and their actual value. And that was kind of the heart of this film, how Lightning has his journey where he learns humility. It's by being stuck and kind of remembering the good old days and the ways other people live their lives that kind of snaps him out of the fast lane and only looking to be number one and win races. And that piece, the heart of it, the the is the missing element that just even as Cars 3 kind of still goes back to racing in these small towns, it's not about that, that's, though. It's not exploring that stuff. And even the part where they talk about you know, the highway being built and that's how this city got left behind, that's the stuff that I think made elevated this film just a little bit where it had some deeper themes while having the wacky fun characters, while having the races. It's simple. It's not a super deep film, but there is enough there that makes it interesting so it can entertain and kind of tug on the heartstrings just a little bit. So it comes in at number one. If you want more of my animated franchise rankings, you can check those out right over there. If you want to see me talk with my kids about some of your favorite animated franchises, you can check that out right down there. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.